greetings, everyone. Uh, I, I first, I want to thank the International Manifesto Group for inviting me to participate in this meeting. And I thank everyone who's joined us today. Uh, this is an opportune moment to discuss the issues raised by the manifesto. A series of catastrophes, all of them human made, have come to a head. In recent weeks, we have witnessed the end of the US occupation of Afghanistan, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and its many impacts and a disaster created by Hurricane Ida and the lack of an infrastructure built to protect people. The manifesto references the dangers of left-wing abdication. What passes for left-wing politics here in the US is quite frankly a mockery of the term. As the manifesto states, quote, the common problems of the people are not even discussed, let alone addressed. Although majorities in capitalist countries and third world post-communist countries or the deindustrialized West remain opposed to, to neoliberalism, as political establishments reject even the mildest concession, this opposition can find little or no political expression, unquote. We have seen this dynamic play out at, as the end of the 20 year long war against the people of Afghanistan comes to an end. Instead of cogent analysis about the history of this conflict, we are relegated to hearing jingoistic nostrums, phony concerns about the rights of Afghan women and outright lies. The collaboration between corporate media and the state continues as the effort to put a positive spin resulted in obvious pro-US propaganda of soldiers playing with children, but a disappearance from media of the last killing of an Afghan family, including little children. It was quite disappointing to see people who think of themselves as, as leftists go along with the narrative of American exceptionalism and white man's burden, leaving out entirely that Afghan women, for example, were progressing in that society until Jimmy Carter used the same jihadists we are now told are villains to undermine a secular government. While we are watching the crisis in imperialism, the COVID-19 pandemic rages in portions of the US where there are low rates of vaccination. Vaccination is an important tool which has been undermined by hoarding on the part of wealthier nations who have refused to share uh, or to allow manufacture and distribution that does not benefit pharmaceutical companies who have made a fortune because of public funding. But the pandemic's effects are not confined to illness and death. The shutdown of the economy resulted in the unemployment of millions of people, homelessness, and many other dislocations. We were told that every COVID problem was the fault of Donald Trump, but Joe Biden has repeated his predecessor's goal of getting people back to work. That is why unemployment relief is temporary. And in just two days, ironically, after the US Labor Day holiday, some 30 million people are in danger of losing their benefits. Likewise, the moratorium on evictions has ended and the crisis of the unhoused will worsen. As we watch the COVID crisis unfold, the impact of human-made climate change continues unabated. One week ago, Hurricane Ida struck New Orleans and the Gulf Coast. The city of New Orleans escaped flooding because of the publicly funded rebuilt levee system, but it is still without power and, may, and they may not have it again for another week. The storm continued to the Northeast region of this country, which suffered from heavy rains and flooding. Here in New York City, where I live, 13 people died, mostly poor people who lived in illegal basement apartments. The mass transit system was flooded and remains impacted. 50 people died in New York and New Jersey, far from the region which is usually most affected by tropical storms. We've seen finger pointing about the awful lack of preparation and warnings to the public, but little talk of the fossil fuel production which worsens these weather phenomenon or of the lack of a people-centered approach which would provide a truly humanitarian uh, approach in these circumstances. Of course, we go back to Afghanistan in discussing this issue because it is the US military that is the biggest producer of fossil fuels in the world. 
It cannot be otherwise when there are 800 US military facilities around the world and military spending comprises 60% of the federal discretionary budget, which is of course connected to the inability to address human needs when catastrophes like COVID or hurricanes strike. Left-wing abdication plays a role in all of these crises I have outlined. I have out outlined. The stand down is creating suffering around the world in Kabul, New Orleans, and New York, and in hospitals around this country. It is time to be harsh in our assessments and point out the collaborations which posit that Joe Biden somehow provides harm reduction in comparison to Donald Trump. He may have taken troops out of Afghanistan, but if he did so in order to attack another nation, there's no cause for celebration. That is why meetings such as this are so important. If truly left voices are not heard, these interconnected crises will only intensify. Thank you very much.